Um, what's what's different with your hair, Heidi? Is it just longer? No, no? Just, just here, just present. <laughs> Her hair is here and present. I love that. Okay, you know, I used to hate the holiday season because it felt like everything shut down and I couldn't get anything done and everyone was traveling and all the businesses were, you know, taking like a week and a half, two weeks, sometimes doing a half week break. And I was like, what about me and my goals? And um, so I had to learn how to be present with that and accept that people need time to rest. And um, that's really what winter is all about, is about resting. And we forget that that's actually a intricate part of the creative process is resting. And um, so if you think about, you know, you, you harvest uh, the soil, you till it, and then you let it rest so you can plant new seeds and allow that to blossom and grow. Yeah. And so it's very important when um, I find in our life, it can be usually about on a yearly cycle, <clears throat> Like things seem to be like popping and going and new things, new opportunities, and it's really exciting and great. But there comes a time when it feels like everything's just sort of still. And it's important that we learn how to appreciate that and be mindful in that, be present in that, and honor the stillness because it is a part of the creative process. In fact, you get more done doing nothing than you do doing something. <laughs> Let me say that again. You get more done doing nothing than you do doing something because it's in our when we are still we are open to receive see we got the creative process all wrong we think that we got to do 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 it make something happen when really everything that we could possibly need is pre-installed within us and so what the real work is is to quiet our mind enough so that we can be still enough to receive the gifts that are already there. It's about allowing what is there to come forth and express. Yeah. So if it feels like you're in a time, what, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? It's good, it's good to see you. Oh, it's really good that you're here. Thank you. Um, it's, it's important to honor those times in your life when it's quiet because the, seed, the, the soil's resting, the seeds are germinating, you know? And it doesn't behoove you to stop the creative process and dig up the seeds and be like, why aren't you doing anything? <laughs> I don't trust that you're doing what you do naturally. <laughs> right? And so um, then we get in with it and we mess it all up and then nothing grows. And then we have the wonderful story of nothing ever happens. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you keep messing it up. So just chill out, baby. Like, just stop. Another thing that happens um, around the holidays is that people get stressed out. And it's no surprise because there's such an emphasis on buying, right? And that somehow the measure of your love is, in, is reflective in how much you spend on those in your life. <laughs> 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 Which is like ridiculous, right? <laughs> it's absolutely crazy because how could that possibly be so? We think that offering things that have no actual value in the grand scheme of things means something, right? Because we know here, we're in on the secret, that the only thing that has true value is that which is eternal. So what is actually the most beautiful exchange when we're giving gifts is the intention behind the gift. We've somehow made it about the actual thing, which will inevitably break down and cease to be sooner than later, right? Or uh, lose your interest after a while, and yet we make that the most valuable thing. So let's all just agree not to do that this year, okay? Amen. We good? Yeah? Good? All right, good. All right. My mom, it was so sweet, my mom was at our kitchen. She doesn't like to use her oven because it always burns everything that she does, so she was using our um, oven. And she made all of her coworkers cookies. And she made little, she went to the 99 cent store, got cute little boxes and bags, and she put all this love and effort into it. She made like 15 of these things. And I thought, 
how sweet that was. You know, what a great gift to receive from someone. And, and the love and the um, attention to detail that she put into it, like a beautiful gesture. And, and when they receive it, when, you rec when you're open to receive the gifts that others give, then you create the space for a miracle to unfold. And a miracle is experienced at the level of the mind. It's something that grows from love, when love is expressed, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, you should be mindful of that this year. But another reason why many people get stressed around the holidays is because of a resentment of, uh, of sorts. Because so many people have been oppressed and hurt because of the Christmas mythology that they feel alienated around this time if they don't celebrate it. And so we have the opportunity to do a lot of healing around that time by being mindful and loving to everyone and not expect everybody to do what you do, right? I think that we're learning that a lot this year, is that not everybody does what we do. And so we can honor what we do, and give people the space to do what they do, and we can all live harmoniously if we're willing to stay out of right versus wrong. If we're willing to lay down our defensiveness and be open to the natural essence of grace that flows when we move from our heart, right? Now, the Christian mythology, the Christian religion has been used as a weapon throughout history. And within this community, I think that many of us can relate to that, just in the LGBTQA community, how the Bible has been used as a weapon when really the Bible should be a tool, you know, to support enlightenment because the foundational teachings of Jesus of Christ is about love and acceptance and compassion. I don't know where it all got mixed up and, and, and mumbled and jumbled and all that stuff. So um, what we're going to do today, as you can see, I have my whiteboard up here, is we're going to actually deconstruct the mythology story of the nativity and look at what's really going on so we can have a new way to hold it in our minds and our hearts, which feels empowering for all people, not just those that celebrate the traditional Christmas. Sound good? Yeah. We're going to go to school a little bit. All right, so we got to be open to learn here a little bit. So, it all starts... It, so the whole thing starts when um, uh, an angel comes and tells Mary... You knocked up, Mary. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> because, now we gotta listen here. This is the first place where they really try to create shame in the consciousness, in the collective consciousness. Because it was crucial to this story that the person that gave birth to the Christ was a virgin. Because there was a belief that, what, what's the beliefs about virgin? That they're what? Pure. Yeah, so we have pure, that's a pregnant person. <laughs> Just in case, that's pregnancy. So we have the essence of purity and innocence, right? Okay, so Mary gets a calling, she gets a blessing, and then she is pregnant with inspiration. So we have the symbol of innocence, of purity. Now we got Joseph. Now he's kicking it in an ancient desert civilization, and his fiance is suddenly pregnant, which is grounds for death back then. And he has to think about it, but after he works through his stuff, he also gets visited by an angel, but we, what we can say is he also gets inspired to lead in love. He hears the voice of love, and he accepts her and loves her unconditionally. So we have perfect innocence and purity coupled with, or I should say in the container of, unconditional love. All right? Innocence and unconditional love. <clears throat> this is a good formula. See, we're going somewhere. So let's put these two lovebirds over to the side for a moment. So you get three, I, you know, and I was actually listening to an uh, interesting teaching about this, uh, about how nowhere does it say they're men, wise men. But again, going back to the crucialness of having to be a virgin here, you know, we don't have to go into like the patriarchal society and all that stuff. But okay, so, uh, 
<clears throat> the feminist in me feels as though it's important to say they didn't have to be wise men. It doesn't say wise men. But we got three awesome people from the <laughs> East looking at a star. Now, who traditionally looks at stars for guidance? Astrologers. Astrologers. Oh, sailors. Okay. No, nope. age is all about the sailors. <laughs> I was thinking astrologers. <laughs> But whatever, however you need to hold it. <laughs> and at that time, traditionally, there was actually really good trade trails from India to Palestine, between India and Palestine. There was a lot of trading going on there. So um, the yogic astrology is very uh, is like the ancient astrology that many people um, that many people uh, use for guidance. It's a very spiritual practice. And so we, have, we can assume that yogic astrologers are looking for uh, signs in the planetary structure to go forth because something new is going to be birthed, right? And what do they follow? They follow what? A star, right. And so a star is what? It's perfect? Born. Light. Light, yes. All right, so here we go. Now we're getting <clears throat> So we have, and from the East, so yogic astrology from the East is an extension of the Hindu practice, correct? So this, already we have a non-dualistic, non-dualistic philosophy um, energizing this, this, this gig over here, right? And so, and what is the guiding force through all of this? A star, light. And so when we bring our attention to the light, something magnificent begins to happen. So where was this baby birthed? In a manger. In a manger, right? Okay. So we got a manger. Now, a manger, now is the manger uh, the four seasons? No. <laughs> no. Manger is very what? It's barnyard rustic. It's, really, it's very shabby chic. <laughs> <laughs> Who said humble? Did somebody say humble? Yeah. yeah, humble, humble. Exactly. So you have something that's very humble. Great. So does the Christ consciousness that expresses itself, does it need a grand uh, temple in order to present itself? No. No. It's humbled. It's a humble beginning. And so, what's really what's really happening this time of year? What we can celebrate, what we can align with, is the awareness that the Christ consciousness. Okay, now, I'm not talking about Jesus the Christ. I'm talking about Christ consciousness, which is the awareness <laughs> of our oneness with perfect love. Christ consciousness is our awareness with uh, our oneness with God. Christ consciousness is our awareness that we are all one. So in the stillness of winter, where we are restful, where we are quiet, the, uh, there is an awakening that can come within. So right away we have this guidance to quiet your mind. Use this opportunity to, st to get into the stillness. Focus on the light within. Understand that you are perfectly innocent. Create the container of unconditional love. And humble yourself enough to say that I am one with the one. I am as you are. Hmm. Be able to see the likeness in our brothers and sisters. Look for the unifying um, aspects in each and every one of us. And what gets to be birthed through that is, boom, the Christ consciousness. An awareness that we are all one. Now, isn't that, oh, I can feel that in my heart. Isn't that a much more powerful way to hold the nativity story? Yeah, yeah. Because within that, it's an invitation for us all to come together, to unite. Nowhere, yeah, okay, so, so, so someone along the line were like, oh, they brought gifts, so let's, let's, uh, let's monetize on that. <laughs> Make it all about the presents and the giving and the money. 
But, oh, thank you, Tom. Um, but we know what's really going on now. And so this is the work around this time. This is the invitation. I don't want to say the work because who wants to do work around this time? It's the holidays, right? We want to be in sweats. We want to eat cookies. And we want to feel happy, right? So let us use this time of year as a time of reflection, as a time of going within so that the inspired vision for the new year can emerge and express. Mm -hmm. um, it's within the stillness that we can begin to hear the gentle voice of the creator. It's not out there pan pounding the pavements. It's not out there um, pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps, rolling up our sleeves and getting it done. It's in the gentle uh, moments of quietness that we can experience through our breath, the breath of life, the thing that gives and sustains life. So let's review one more time. If we follow the light within, so we contemplate the light within. In our practitioner program, even our opening meditation, what a perfect example of a way that you can just gently use your imagination, one of our most valuable tools, to invite perfect light to come into your awareness, your consciousness, to, pen to penetrate every <coughs> aspect of your essence. Because we are luminous, okay? Many, many spiritual teachings that talk about our actual reality being one of light. And we may not even be able to fully comprehend that right now, and we don't have to, but we can allow that luminous essence to come forth and express freely, and we can just rest in it. Now, so far, what has taken any great effort? The most, eff the most effort that you're going to have to do to have this sort of loving practice for yourself, the most effort you're going to have to put forth is clearing your calendar, you know, is making five to ten minutes a day to practice this which can sometimes seem overwhelming for many people. I have been there, but it's worth it. <laughs> so let's do a little less this holiday season and contemplate the light within. And when we contemplate the light within, we begin to have an experience of our true essence. We feel a calming experience. I usually feel it as, a, as sort of like a broad stroke of contentment. But within that, there are no judgments. When I can quiet my mind, I'm not judging myself. When I quiet my mind, I'm not into thinking what I don't have, what I'm lacking. I know that when I am present in the moment, on my breath, contemplating light within, I understand that all my needs are met here and now. And from within that, what begins to blossom and grow is an awareness to my connectivity to every single one of you. And that's why prayer is so powerful. Because I conclude every one of my prayers with a blessing for each and every one of you. I hold inspire in my mind and I send waves and waves of light out to you. So this is my affirmation that we are all one. And if you really are interested on how to be proactive during this time that there seems to be a lot of dis, um, unsettlement in our country, send your prayers to the places that feel the most restless right now. Send that light to the people who are being courageous enough to stand as the symbol of hatred, of racism, of fascism, all of that stuff. The people that are being courageous enough to end this lifetime to take on that role, to be the direct, <laughs> the, to be the symbol of other people's hatred. Send them love instead. Send them love instead. Pray that love can penetrate their heart and that they can express that and share that. Because once love is felt, once we lead from love, we can't lead from fear any longer. We cannot preach hate. We cannot um, preach separation when we feel love in our heart. So pray that our leaders, all of our leaders, feel love in their heart, feel true joy, so that they can lead from that place. Yeah. Hold the vision of unity through the light. Know that this bright white light, see what's wonderful um, about this star is that it was able to be seen across the world. And that star is a symbol of God's love because God's love shines just as brightly on me as it does on you. It shines just as brightly um, on, on LA as it does in Washington, D.C. 
to know that God's love is everywhere, illuminating all beings. There is no one that God favors more than anyone else. We are all perfect. We are all one in love. So let us um, remember this, this simple, the simple little breakdown when we feel challenged this holiday season, when we feel the temptation to go into judgment or defensiveness or hurt, let us heal the wounds of the past. Let us heal our cultural wounds so that we can stand as the light. And what's wonderful is the more you contemplate the light, the more you experience yourself as the light, what do you think you become? The light. The light. And what do people follow? The light. They go towards the light. For guidance. Yeah. So be the luminous presence in your community, in your family, at work. Be the change. Demonstrate what's possible when we lead from love. That is our most powerful form of teaching. It's our demonstration. We are always teaching people how to treat us. We are always teaching people the efficacy of our choices. So what are you interested in teaching others this holiday season? What is possible for you? Yeah. Be the light. Yeah. You are the light. Yeah. Yes? yes? Yes. Feel good? Yes. Make sense? Yes. Let's go with it. So just taking a moment now to <laughs> contemplate that light. Let's revisit it again. And just using your imagination, because our imagination has been gifted us, uh, so we use it. We can play with it. And just invite waves and waves of that bright white light to flow through your physical body, your mental body, your emotional body. Until that's all that there is. Perfect, bright, white light. You are the light. And this light cannot be contained, so it grows and expands and it fills this room until from floor to ceiling all there is is light. And we rest in the light. And we understand that the light is rejuvenating, restorative. It supports us in realigning. It burns away anything that no longer serves us, including the belief systems, the thoughts, the unloving habits that keep us in fear, that keep us in limitation, that keep us separated from our brothers and sisters. No longer are we interested in that. So we stand in the truth of who we are. We are the light. And the light is expansive, and the light is bright. The light is healing, and the light is creative. The light shines brightly on everyone. It extends and grows into the hearts of all who are around. Wherever there is darkness, the light enters, and the darkness disappears. So we are the light holders. We go forward as the light houses, demonstrating the powerful, powerful results of a life lived in love so people can see and follow our demonstration so they can love themselves and in turn love their brothers and sisters. So now we send this light to our world leaders, to our politicians. We send this light to our fathers and our mothers. We send this light to our brothers and sisters, to our co-workers, to our employers and employees, to our loved ones, to our children. And we thank the children for being the perfect demonstration of a life lived in love, fearlessly, courageously. We feel the love in our heart. Take a moment to lean into that and feel the love. And since the nature of God is to extend and expand, we allow this love to extend and expand into infinity, sharing our light with all because we are one with all. Truly, we are the light. And so it is. So it is.